Yes, well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm talking today about the privacy implications of using drones in Australia. Now, Australia is a signatory of an international covenant on civil and political rights, which provides that uh, as a signatory, we are to provide in our domestic system adequate protection against interference with privacy, which sounds all very uh, grand, but in actual fact, it uh, hasn't worked out quite to be so comprehensive. Uh, privacy in Australia can be uh, reflected in three respects. The first of which is privacy of information. Uh, and that in, uh, in fact is, as far as we go uh, from a government point of view, in response to those obligations, it's manifest in the Privacy Act, again very grand sounding, but all it does is uh, prescribe a system which is called the APPs, the Australian Privacy Principles, which govern the collection of personal information and the use and disclosure of that information, uh, storage and, and so forth. Personal information has been defined as including uh, images of someone, information from which you can identify a person that includes the, the video or, or photographs of them. And so those laws apply to Commonwealth agencies. Uh, so if you're a researcher uh, working for a Commonwealth agency, you'll be caught by uh, those laws or a private organisation with a turnover of $3 million or more. So there's going to be a lot of small uh, private organisations where those laws have no application at all. If you're um, working as a researcher for a state agency, then you'll be governed by the state laws and they mostly apply something called the IPPs, the Information Privacy Principles, which also govern the use, disclosure uh, and storage of information similar to the APPs, but not exactly the same. So some um, minor and technical differences there that uh, perhaps may have some significance in practice. So when it comes to the other areas of law, uh, privacy of uh, communications or uh, something we might otherwise uh, call privacy from surveillance, and lastly, personal privacy. So they are the areas of privacy that uh, we are concerning ourselves when we, we talk about the types of laws that govern privacy in Australia. Now, if we look at personal privacy, Australia is the only major common law country, and the common law countries tend to be the Commonwealth countries, that doesn't have a, a cause of action that protects um, privacy. Uh, instead, what happens in Australia is that we have to rely, uh, that is anyone that has their privacy uh, invaded, uh, would need to rely on the old common law causes of action. So things like trespass to land or something called private nuisance. Now trespass to land is an unlawful interference uh, with the land in the possession of another. So that has its limitations. A drone that is flown outside the boundary line but which is still filming something happening on the property does not commit a trespass. Uh, if someone is only a visitor to the property, maybe sunbathing in the backyard, they would not have uh, a cause of action for trespass because they're not in possession of the land. That uh, notion of possession of land, the land extends only to the height of what's known as a reasonable user. So if the drone is flown at a height that is above that, no trespass is committed. What is the height of a, re a reasonable user? Uh, how long is a piece of string? It's, it really depends on um, the circumstances. It would be certainly above roof level and some height uh, beyond that. And when it comes to disclosure, there are these two types of, of intrusion when it comes to uh, uh, or invasion when it comes to uh, uh, the common law. We might think of it in terms of an unreasonable intrusion on someone's privacy and then a disclosure of any information that's gained as a result of 
that intrusion. And those uh, types of invasions may be intentional or unintentional. So it would be possible, for example, for a drone to unintentionally uh, capture the image of someone, but then for that information for some reason to be uploaded to YouTube, which would be an intentional disclosure. It would be possible um, if we're looking at someone that's just bought a drone from a JB Hi-Fi to film the neighbour, that would be an intentional intrusion and then to upload it to YouTube would be an intentional disclosure. So when it comes to disclosures, the only action really in Australia is something called a breach of confidence. Now a breach of confidence needs information with a quality of confidence, so that information to be obtained in circumstances importing an obligation of confidence and a use uh, either actual or threatened. Now in the, any sort of intimate activity might be regarded as having a quality of confidence and the fact that it can only be recorded using some sort of surreptitious means um, which might include flying a drone overhead uh, would um, satisfy the second element. But once that information gets into the public domain, so by being uploaded to YouTube, then really uh, the confidence is lost. So very limited uh, circumstances that someone can bring in action uh, for breach of privacy uh, under our common law. So trespass to land, uh, private nuisance and the breach of confidence being the, uh, the actions that someone may have available to them. When it comes to privacy from surveillance, there are eight jurisdictions in Australia. Five of those, Northern Territory, West Australia, South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, they have now passed laws that govern optical surveillance devices that would cover uh, cameras uh, that are mounted on drones. Whereas the other three, Queensland, ACT, Tasmania, really haven't stepped into the 21st century. They've still got laws that only apply to audio devices. And so flying a drone in any of those three jurisdictions uh, is not going to be caught by the uh, surveillance laws. And then when we look at the, the other five places, the laws there unfortunately are not uniform. And so to illustrate the differences, I've just got some examples there for you. Uh, the top one there, uh, back in May this year, May 2017 in Sydney, a lady stepped out of the shower in her fifth floor apartment, looked out the window and saw that she was being watched by a drone. Now uh, the building I've got in the image there is only four stories tall, but you can appreciate that uh, in the old days then you might uh, have ex an expect expectation that uh, you would have uh, privacy unless you were surrounded by buildings of a similar height and uh, that uh, uh, you, you kept the curtains open. The image to the right there of the backyard, uh, you might see in the, in the top uh, right side of that image, they've got a, a six, foot four, uh, six foot tall fence. In the old days that might have been expected to uh, give you some expectation of privacy. Not so today if you fly a drone overhead. And the last image there is, uh, oh, and I should mention in April uh, this year, 2017 in Darwin, there was a lady that came home from the gym, went skinny dipping, uh, looked up and saw that she was being filmed by a drone. Uh, the last image at the bottom there is um, bushland. Um, it's possible to have a, an expectation of privacy even in a public place like that. Uh, back in June 2012, there was an Austrian politician who uh, stopped his car and ventured into the, the uh, deep woodlands with his partner and there engaged uh, in what was described as an explicit sexual encounter. Uh, unfortunately, he was doing that in front of um, a camera trap, uh, the things that are set up to monitor the activities of little uh, furry animals and the researchers there got a little bit more than what they expected. While that wasn't a drone case, you can imagine that uh, a research drone could uh, just as e equally as caught uh, similar images. So let's uh, set up something of a scorecard on how the surveillance laws in Australia 
might handle those various situations. Well, we can put up there straight away the fact that in Queensland, Tasmania, the ACT, with their laws only applying to listing devices, uh, that uh, they would provide no prohibition on uh, filming. We can add to that New South Wales surveillance laws. Even though they apply to video devices, their laws only prohibit the use of a surveillance device uh, on premises or in a vehicle um, where they've been placed there without the consent of the owner or the, the occupier. By contrast, WA and the Northern Territory uh, prohibit uh, the recording uh, in each of those situations. So the lady that went skinny dipping uh, in her backyard pool in the Northern Territory would have had would have been able to invoke the law there uh, if she had known who the the operator of the drone was, and that's another issue besides all of these things is that uh, uh, unless you know the the owner or the operator of the drone, it might be very difficult to see any sort of uh, recourse. And finally, for the other two states, Victoria would only apply to the situation of the person stepping out of the shower in the uh, apartment because their laws do not apply to anything occurring outside of a building. And in South Australia, well, their laws don't apply to anything happening in public. So they would not apply to uh, video filmed of the bushland. The other difficulty uh, for persons who have had their privacy invaded in all of these situations is that uh, it's only a, a prohibition, a criminal offence, uh, if the authorities uh, take action. There's no uh, civil remedy for anyone who's had their uh, privacy invaded. There's no way that they can get um, a, a remedy in the form of compensation or, or something of that nature. Okay, so because of those limitations in each of those places, we um, have had five law reform commissions that have recommended that there should be, at some time in the future, a statutory cause of action enacted which provides a civil remedy for someone who's had their privacy invaded, either in the form of an invasion, an unreasonable invasion, or a disclosure of their public facts, uh, their, their private facts. Uh, to this uh, day, no government has acted on those recommendations. We've had a House of Representatives inquiry into drones, which has made a similar recommendation. Uh, again, nothing has come of that. We currently have a Senate inquiry that's looking into the question of drones. One of the issues they're going to be looking at is privacy, so we will see uh, what comes of that with their recommendations and um, uh, what, uh, what action government may or may not take. So this is uh, then a summary uh, of, uh, of the situation with uh, Australia's privacy laws that we did have this, uh, we do have this international obligation. The most we've done is under the Privacy Act to uh, provide laws governing the uh, collection, um, use, disclosure of private information, which applies to images, but uh, they only apply to Commonwealth agencies, private agencies with a turnover of $3 million or more. State laws apply to uh, state agencies. Common law doesn't provide much help uh, in, uh, in the case of uh, images that might be taken by drones. Uh, there are surveillance devices laws in five Australian jurisdictions, but they're inconsistent. And three Australian jurisdictions don't have any at all. There have been these recommendations, so it's a case of watch this space with those, but to this date, nothing's come of them and um, maybe nothing ever will. And I've added there an article that I've written that has uh, examined this, this whole area, so I've got it there with the reference uh, in case you'd like to uh, look at the, the detail a little bit closer. So there you have it. That's the law of privacy as it applies to drones.